This has been a tough year economically for a lot of us, and maybe we've done things that we're not proud of. CBS News analyst Father Thomas Williams is author of Knowing Right from Wrong, A Christian Guide to Conscience. Good morning to you. Good morning, Maggie. Knowing Right from Wrong. This is one of those conversations that we could have for hours and hours and hours. Yes, we could. So let's start here. Do you think that everybody knows the difference between right and wrong inside? I think everybody is moved to look for right and, and to oppose wrong, but people have different degrees of knowledge of that. I think some people have a very fine conscience because they really care about being good people. Other people that for years have been kind of sweeping things under the rug, they might have lost that sense over, over time. But it's yeah. in there. So even when they're doing something wrong, you believe that the gut is saying this is wrong? I think we're moral beings. I mean, it's one of the things that kind of defines us as, as human persons, that we have a sense that certain things should be done, other things we should be avoiding. Yeah, I think we all do. In the book, you talk about conscience like an alarm clock, but for some people, it's more like a whisper. So what do you suggest to people? How can they better tell when their conscience is knocking? Well, we have to listen to it. I mean, I think part of the problem is nowadays you have your Walkman in all day long. You're not listening to anything except outside music. You don't have a chance even to feel your own soul and your own heart telling you, you know, that you have to be living better, that to do other things that you're not doing, So et you're saying just be quiet and meditate? Well, that's part of it. I mean, you have to be quiet and meditate. You also have to consult, especially if you're, if you're a doctor, you study medical ethics. If you, uh, you talk to people that you know and that you respect, if there are wise people, people whose moral integrity is really means something to you, listen to them, consult with them. Sure, there are lots of ways. I think that last one is key. Someone you respect, someone, you know, for me, that's my husband. Yeah, and not, and not just a smart person, but a person. Like it is and is, uh, is ethical. That's right. Is there someone you can look up to and you say, this person lives what he or she preaches and this is, they'll give me good advice. Yeah. In, in the book, you also talk about the importance of regular self-tests, mm -hmm. kind of training your conscience. How do you do that? Well, it's something we used to call in my tradition, examination of conscience, where from time to time, you just think back over the way you've been living in the last day, the last week, the last month, and if there are things that you should be changing, a way you should be living better. And there, your conscience not only tells you what's been wrong, but also pushes you toward moral excellence, but to better things, you know, but things what, that maybe you if, haven't been doing. If, if you look inside yourself and you don't see what other people see so clearly. Well, again, I think that you will if you become a more reflective person. I think someone who spends a little bit more time with himself or herself has a chance to get to know himself better. And if you look, do that in the light of you know, what is true and what is good, then you start getting a better idea of, of the way you really are. And you think that, that you have to be raised that way, that you have to be taught I think it helps right a lot. Education of conscience is a very important thing. Not, I don't think we're born with you know, a clear set of, of rules and regulations about what's good and what's bad. We need to learn that over time, and, and education helps an awful lot. In the introduction, we mentioned how these are tough economic times, and people may have done something they're not proud of. Is there ever an excuse to mm -hmm. defy your conscience if your family is starving and you take some food? Well, there, you should never, ever, ever def defy your conscience, but your conscience will, in certain circumstances, say this would be a case where, to save yourself, you can do this. In other words, you're not going against conscience, but conscience itself will, will judge that situation the way you should, you should act in it. So, so you're saying it's okay? So well, well, it can be. To save your life, sure. I mean, in, in the classical tradition, it's not stealing if you're taking bread to live because that's meant for everybody in a sense. But, I mean, those are things that we can easily, you know, make into big loopholes where we're justifying anything, you know. Do you think right and wrong is, is clear or is there a gray area? There's a lot of gray area. But I think that in the end, there's always the right choice to make. And I that's what your conscience tells you? That's what your conscience tells you. And you have to work toward that. All right. Father Thomas Williams, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. Thank it's you a so pleasure much. to be on the show. Good to see you again.